This is the first emergency podcast or broadcast I have ever done. I read a book in 1984 called The Grunge of Giants by Dr. R. Buck, Mr. Fuller. I don't recommend it. <laughs> but what Fuller said was that our wealth is stolen via the banks. So I'll give you a little bit of history. 1971, there was a guy named D.B. Cooper, and he supposedly jumped out of the back of a 727 in 1971, <clears throat> and his alias was D.B. Cooper. Remember those initials, D.B. Cooper, because what it stands for is deception, betrayal, collusion. Deception, betrayal, and collusion. So what's going on today is deception, betrayal, and collusion. What Janet Yellen was saying, you know, we all we all left Monday thinking that, hey, it's okay. The banks are going to be bailed out and, and it won't be at the taxpayer's uh, expense, which we all knew was a lie. It would be at your dollar's expense or your deposit's expense in the respect that the money had to be created out of thin air. And we just figured that would mean more inflation. And so all of the banks, regardless of their uh, their their poor choices, their gambling, if you will, in, in depositors' assets, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, that they'd be bailed out and that this would just be an ever-increasing uh, party of, of uh, printing and of uh, backstopping the banks. And what she said yesterday was, was truly um, shocking to me. It's about how the central banks of the world, besides they're not really banks, <laughs> they're not, they're really Marxist and central, but they're not really banks and how they collude. And they collude with big companies like BlackRock, deception, betrayal, collusion, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, this is collusion. She was also head of the Fed and now she's head of the Treasury. Any collusion there? And so our economy is crashing at high speed. We're being set up right now. One of the biggest changes in world history, the way the dollar is set up, the dollar always loses money. It's, it's called Triffin's Dilemma. If you're the reserve currency of the world, the dollar always loses value because debt always goes up. So the Fed has to keep printing, the treasury has to keep printing. And that's why if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, which came out 25 years ago, it said the rich don't work for money, rich don't save money because the dollar is fake. The US dollar is fake. All currencies are fake. So people talk about all well, this, you know, the euro is getting stronger. To me, it's all bullshit. I want resources. I want gold, silver, oil. That's what, and then today, Bitcoin. The only banks that will be bailed out will be those banks that have the um, approval of the majority of the FDIC board, the majority of the Federal Reserve Board, and the her. and her and Janet Yellen herself, those are the only ones that will be bailed out. In other words, those banks, she said, that in our minds are too big to fail, the systemically too big to fail banks. In essence, what she was saying was that all of those smaller banks are dead on arrival. They won't be bailed out, and if they're not deemed to be systemically important, then they will have no backstopping. And what that is basically doing is herding everyone into a pen of the four, five, six biggest commercial banks in the world, uh, or in the United States, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America, the City, the JP, the Goldman, all of them are going to be too big to fail, systemically too big to fail, interconnected with one another through a massive, massive amount of derivatives whereby if they fail, they'll bring down the whole system. But the little banks who um, who run into trouble, and we're going to talk about why they run into trouble in a moment, but those banks, no, they won't be bailed out and um, too bad. And what that's going to do is collapse the, the, the entire small banking uh, industry, the entire regional bank industry is going to collapse. Anybody who is into the stock market and real estate market right now, or even worse, somebody who believes in saving dollars or loonies, the Canadian dollar or yen or pesos, I don't know if you understand here, printing trillions of it. 
if they're going to print money and they're giving it to me now at under 2%, so I refinance those five houses. I think I'm going to pull out a million dollars. And I, it's, it doesn't affect the cash flow at all because the interest rates are so low, my personal cash flow. But I'm just going to buy more stuff. I am going to buy another apartment house in Austin. You know why? Because every time they print money, every time the Fed and the Treasury print money, they screw the working class. Lower interest rates causes inflation, which makes it impossible for young people and poor people and working class people to afford their first house. So naturally, they're going to move into my apartment house. You know, this is called macroeconomics, but there's, there's, a, there's a debt to GDP ratio. So if we borrowed money at 90% debt to GDP ratio, then the economy, the GDP grew by 1.1%. So it was a healthy economy. When COVID hit, it was 106%. And then today is 130%. So when I look at any decision I'm going to make first, I'm going to look macro. So when I see 130% debt to GDP ratio and 90% is healthy, we're sick. It's important to understand something. So all of these banks over the last several years have accumulated with the deposits that they received since the president was able to remove all of the reserve requirements during the pandemic to zero. So most of these banks have virtually nothing in the way of currency on hand. And because they would take these uh, deposits that came in from, from the depositors and they would buy bonds with them, typically treasuries and in many cases, mortgage-backed securities at rates above what, what you know they were paying, of course, to the depositors. But uh, in, in what was typically considered safe places to be, the problem is all of those bonds have an average maturity uh, or an average yield rather of about two to two and a half percent and long maturities. And so the problem is, is that since interest rates have risen closer to 5%, every one of those bonds in their portfolio have lost 50% or more of their value. Now, the banking regulations say that they don't have to mark those to market mm -hmm. until they sell them. And so they have a whole balance sheet filled, up, filled with toxic assets that that have lost over half their value or more. So in the case of SVC, when you saw a run on the bank, for whatever reason, you get people running on the bank because there's so little cash, uh, the reserve requirements have been slashed to nothing. These banks are forced to sell their bonds at a huge loss in order to meet customer demands to get their money back. And if enough uh, people uh, redeem or withdraw their money and the banks are forced to liquidate their bond holdings, which are all have been eviscerated by rising rates, then as we saw last week, a large bank can become insolvent in less than 24 hours. And that's exactly what happened.